So I, w I like to start with this quote. If the rate of change on the outside exceeds the rate of change on the inside, the end is near. So when you think about that, I always think about the personal devices that we all use. Okay, and for the first time ever in the last five years, we have better devices in our pockets, in our bra straps, on our eyes, on our wrists, than what our company gives us to work with. Agree or disagree? Agree. We have easier to use apps outside of work than we do inside work. Agree, disagree? Crazy, right? So that pendulum has sw shifted. It's swung, which basically means what? The expectation on us has changed forever. People are always going to say, your applications suck. It's really hard to work. It's really hard to get stuff done. Did you ever hear that? Yeah, why? Like, who gives them the right to say that? This. Because that's what they're dealing with. So our job is to say, how do we actually take that, take that, and turn it into something that we can start to catch up. Now, are we ever going to catch up and beat that? No, never. But do we want to start meeting people in how they actually are serviced outside of work? So who gets serviced better, your customers or your employees, from a digital standpoint? Customers. Why is that? I'm, gonna, I'm sorry? They generate revenue, but our employees don't do a damn thing. Oops, sorry. No, our employees, why are, our employees are important too. Without the employees, we can't generate revenue. So it's fascinating time to think about this. The other thing that's really fascinating about this is that a lot of organizations don't have a digital <coughs> strategy when it comes to people. Notice I didn't even say HR. I said when it comes to people. Okay? Now, the organization that, that I work with, you know, we go out and work with organizations all the time, and the first thing we say is, show us your digital strategy, HR, or people group. And they always show us a technology roadmap. Digital is not technology. Did everyone hear that? Digital is not technology. Technology is the how. Technology is the how of digital. Okay, but digital is different, and we're going to talk about what that means in a second. So start with a few of these questions. Do you have a growth mindset or a fixed mindset? What's a fixed mindset? I don't like change. We're going to stay the same. Growth mindset, we're going to break glass, we're going to do what that video said. Raise your hand if you have a fixed mindset. Raise your hand if you work for a company with a fixed mindset. Yeah, that made, there's a lot of uh, nervous giggles when I said that. So that, that's awkward, right? And that's happening a lot, you guys, by the way, where organizations are like, we're growth people, yet we work for a company that's fixed. How does it make you feel? Trapped? Constrained? Frustrated? So because of that, we, it's our, how's it going to change? Who's going to change it? We are. Like, that's the only way it will change. There's not going to be a mandate that comes down that says, oh, now we're a growth company. And I know a bunch of you are once again saying, what's this guy smoking? Because it'll never change in our organization. But it can. It truly, truly can, but it has to start somewhere. So I'd love you, for you guys to think about this concept, because it's something that I think about a lot. The way that we live inside HR is we disrespect the year we live in. Period, end of story. It's 2018 outside of work, and when I come into work, what year is it? Yeah, I think it's 1998. I think there's a 20 year window that we disrespect. And there's still people to this day that say to me, our group's not ready. Oh, no, there's no way they're ready to use a mobile device. There's no way that group can do this. Now, I know there's little things that people can't do on the mobile devices, and there's certain pockets where there are no mobile devices, and there's no connectivity. I totally get that. But in most organizations, we have so much capability. Just think about everything you do. Every single thing you do, and does it match to 2018 standards? 
if it doesn't, that's what we need to be changing. That's what we need to be thinking about. How do we start to respect the fact that mobile devices aren't going away? The internet is not going away. Do you get that? It's not. So how do we start to act differently? It's not just buying new technology. Okay, we've tried that for decades. So we have to start thinking digital first. We have to start asking ourselves this question, what do we as a people function want to be great at versus what is it okay to be performing at? How many of you can answer that question at the bar tonight? Bill Borman's buying drinks. Again, what do we want to be great at versus what is it okay to be okay at? The most, that's, this is the most important question for you to answer. Because if you think about that, how do we operate in HR? We operate in silos, right? We operate in silos. And because of that, everyone thinks that theirs is what? Most important. So, hey, we have to be best at talent acquisition. Nope, we need to be best at learning. Nope, we need to be best at performance management. Oh, guess what? We have to be best in the world at payroll. How many times does people call and say, great job on my paycheck this week? <laughs> right? It doesn't happen. Okay? So from a people standpoint, we need to ask that question. What do we need to be great at? And guess what it is in, the most, in most cases? Talent. It, not talent management. Don't say, oh, here's another dude talking about talent management. It's talent. It's people. It's how to activate our people, know if we have the right people in the right place at the right time. Forget whether we're doing performance management online, whether we're doing applicant tracking systems. Those are all means to an end. The end is talent. That is what's going to differentiate our company. Is our payroll? No. Is how we store address? Now, it can start to make a difference in how work gets done, but we'll talk more about that. The other thing we in HR have been great at is focusing on the exception, not the norm. Everyone thinks they're a snowflake. We can't do it that way because we're unique. We're unique, we're unique, we're unique, we're unique. So what do we do? Customize or say, oh, no, sorry, they can't take part in the program because they're unique. Guess what? If you live that way, you'll never get ahead. Okay, we do want to personalize, and that's where technology is getting us. So what does that look like? It looks like us understanding this. Every organization has its own unique signature or DNA. So when you're networking for the next few days, like listen, but don't necessarily copy. Does that make sense? Because this woman's doing something doesn't mean that this woman should be doing it. Does that make sense? We, we, we like to flock together. We're like, it's safe because this company went with this vendor and did this, so it's safe for me. It doesn't necessarily mean that. You need to understand what your unique DNA is and what makes sense for your organization. Does that, does that resonate with you all? Okay. That's one of the things about benchmarks is we sometimes get in trouble with benchmarks because what do we do? We try to copy who we're benchmarking against. But what we should be doing is leaping ahead of them. Why? We're not trying to be the same as them. We're trying to compete with them, right? We're competing for that T word, talent. So to copy them doesn't necessarily do any good. So what does the equation look like? Now, you guys are at what? An HR tech conference, right? This equation is so, so important. Now, people have been talking about people, process, and technology forever. What's changed dramatically and continues to change is the ratio and the percentages and the M word up there, which is mindset. You can take the best technology in the world and plop it into an organization that has a fixed mindset, that has a terrible understanding of its people, and that has really bad, outdated processes. How does that technology work? at the end of the day? What grade does it get? D to an F. Does that make sense? For all of us, you can take crappy technology, understand your mindset, understand your people, have great processes, what's the overall grade gonna be? 
C, B, B, C. Something like that. So does the best technology win? It helps, but it's not the answer. We need to have the mindset about what we're going to do and the vision, which I'll share with you in a second. We need to understand our people, which means empathy and saying, what do my people do besides come in to do HR things? Did you hear what I said? Like, we hire people for their jobs, not to be HR people. So we have to understand they're doing 99 other things. We need to think about our processes. And by the way, remember that shift I said we're in? If you haven't redesigned your HR processes, as far as how employees work with tools in the last four to five years, your processes are broken. Broken and dead. Now, I know that doesn't make you feel really good at the moment, but a tech away for you to take back. How do I change this? And then the technology, if you get the rest of that, guess how that technology works? Brilliantly. We watch this over thousands of companies. Companies that quote unquote go live, and they're like, that's not what we saw in the demo. <laughs> oh, but it's coming in phase two. If you think about that, how, what, what's, the, what's your name? Noah? What's the last, if you can share with the group, if, what's the last app you've downloaded? The Eventful. <laughs> ah, brilliant. So if the Eventful app sucked, what would you do? Um, I wouldn't know where to go. You wouldn't know where to go. Yeah. But you'd also probably delete it. Delete it. Yeah. Like, if you, delete, if you download apps in your personal life and you don't like them, what do you do? Delete them. Delete them. How often do you go back to see if it got better? Mm. Do you download it again later on, like a few weeks, and say, oh, let's give it another try? No. Not no, we changed. don't. No. Think about rolling out a technology. In phase one, if it's like, eh, and you're behind the scenes saying, hey, just wait for phase two. Guess how people are going to love to come to phase two? Same thing. So we have to think about that in all of our deployments. How do we make phase one value add? So to do that, we have to have a vision. This is a sample of a vision map. Every organization should have a vision, which is basically the top line is my 30-second cocktail napkin drawing. And in any bar around the world, I should be able to say, what am I doing? What are my guiding principles, which, by the way, are more than three usually? What are my attributes of those principles? And then how am I going to measure success? Besides, go live. Go live is not a measure of success. If that's what we're striving for, I would question why we're doing that. Does that make sense? Go live is a thing. I think it actually should be called go begin not go live. Because a lot of people, once you go live, what do you do? You take all the good people off the project. It's a plant that never gets watered. Once you actually go live, that's when the road is there for you to start driving on and doing really cool stuff. So think about that. You have to have a vision. And then you have to have a roadmap. But your roadmap has to combine thinking, capabilities, technology, all in one. It can't just be a technology thing. Because remember what percentage of that roadmap and success technology played? 10. So if all you have is a technology roadmap and you don't have all that other stuff in it, what do you get? An incomplete process. So you have to think about what that looks like. So it's fascinating being in this space for 25 years. Six to eight years ago, there was one group that asked this question. If we just got to the cloud, everything would be perfect. And I was looking in the vendor hall. There's still people that have cloud out there, which is awesome. I, cloud is cool, but cloud does not solve your problems. Does that make sense? Cloud is a delivery vehicle. Is there good software in the cloud? Yes. Is there bad software in the cloud? Goodness, yes. Okay? When CHROs say, if we just get to the cloud, everything will be good. <laughs> like, that's not the holy grail. Okay? The cloud gives us the ability to lower that ratio to 10%. So we can truly focus on things that are going to make us successful. So there's three groups. There's a group that's working on it. There's a group that's there. And there's a group who's really the digital pioneer group. You guys can self-identify. I'm not going to ask which where you are. 
But there's a bunch of people that are in the cloud today, and they're like, nothing changed. And guess what? For all of us old-timers, that's been the same way from mainframe to DOS to Windows to client server to web. We've been doing the same thing. We keep saying, oh, if we just got to Windows. There was a group of people that said, Trust, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, there was a group of people that said, if we could just go from DOS to Windows, everything would be great. Do you remember, does anyone, did anyone ever say that? Because I heard people say that all the time. Now it's like, oh, if we could just get off client server and we could get to the cloud, everything would be great. The technology is not the thing, you guys. The technology enables what we're trying to do. At the same time all that's happened, this whole consumerism and experience thing has hit us. So I'm going to give you guys four key things to focus on. The first thing is how important data is and having this thing called an anti-fragile foundation. What's an anti-fragile foundation? A foundation that is so solid that if something hits it, it doesn't break. Okay? If all of a sudden I acquire a company, cool. If all of a sudden I divest a company, cool. If all of a sudden I have to terminate 3,000 people, cool. If all of a sudden I have to use position management, cool. How many of you have a solid foundation that's got better data about your people than LinkedIn does? One person, the same guy that wants to buy drinks tonight. The troublemaker. That's, do you hear, did you guys hear the way I asked the question? How many of you have a solid foundation that has better data about your people than LinkedIn does? There's one, two people that raised their hand. That's not good. Because where we're moving to requires that. It requires us to think that data is sexy. Raise your hand if you think data is sexy. I'm sorry? Not in Excel. Oh, now we're being very specific afterwards. <laughs> like, not the naked body, but once they're dressed. No, just kidding. Um, that didn't make any sense, what I just said. So, count of three. I want you guys all to say data is sexy. One, two, three. Okay, let's do it one more time, louder. One, two, three. Yeah, and the way you say it is so much sexier than my American mutt accent. Yeah, data is sexy. And it's really important to understand that and think about your job and all of our um, HR business partners and generalists' job is to keep data sexy. Like if I could have a t-shirt, maybe I'll have to get it. Keep data sexy. Because the cleaner our foundation is, and the more solid our foundation is, guess what? It gives us the ability to do so much stuff. There's two types of data. There's structured data and there's unstructured data. What is structured data? Structured data is the stuff that sits in your core HR system. It's very structured. It's table driven. What is unstructured data? Everything else. All of the knowledge documents, the PDFs, the Word documents, and the tribal knowledge that sits up here. Oh, if I just talk to Jane, it'll be fine. Oh, Bill knows how that process works. Oh, yeah, Bob knows that. That's unstructured data. To create a successful workforce or people experience, it takes 20% structured data and 80% unstructured data. Everyone got really quiet. So what does that mean? It means we have to think more about more than just what's in our core HR system, right? We have to think about the rest of the world, the rest of the knowledge, the rest of the content that's around the organization. Now, if I have great data, what do I do? I get credibility. If I have credibility, I can deploy more capability. If I have good data, I can personalize. Otherwise, I don't know who the heck you are, right? If I have bad data, how do I personalize your experience? And if I have good data, I can roll out this crazy, stupid pipe dream that will never happen called artificial intelligence. It's a joke. It's here. How many of you use AI on a daily basis? Every single one of you does. Spotify, after me, huge AI. Make recommendations. Like, how many of you use Spotify? Yeah, like, Michael's really happy. He's coming up next. 
Like, yeah, we all use Spotify. And unlike the band we saw last night who had no AI in their brain because they just played a bunch of random stuff that had no connections, you know, Spotify knows what your, what your tastes are and what? Plays stuff for you. Maps, where you're going, knows the traffic, right? We all use artificial intelligence. It is here in HR. And I'm going to use it in a second with you guys as an example. If we don't have a solid foundation, this is what we have. Frosting on top of a moldy cake. Okay? If you go and say, we're going to buy some artificial intelligence and put it on top of bad data, what do you have? This. Right? It's going to taste sweet for a second. And all of a sudden, when you talk to Siri or Alexa and say, show me my last paycheck, and you've got bad data, what's the experience? Moldy. Okay, so a lot of people say, hey, I can just buy some AI stuff and put it on top of what I have and we'll be fine. That doesn't work. You have to think about the foundation, which leads us to this concept of experience. I hope this resonates with you. End of the day, people will forget what you said, they'll forget what you did, but they'll make, they'll, excuse me, they'll never forget how you made them feel. That is an experience. Okay, I got here on Saturday, couldn't find my luggage for two days until this morning. Every single person I asked, like, yeah, it'll be here. Like, people are really laid back here. <laughs> like, like, when will it be here? Like, huh. sometimes it's 24, 48 hours, 72 hours. I'm like, I'm going to India from here. Like, yeah, it'll catch up to you there. Don't worry. <laughs> like, but there was this dude last night, Jazz, or Rez, Raz, at the uh, concierge desk, who's like, he took the time to actually, like, tell me what to do when I call, told me. Like, tell them it's urgent and there's medicine in there that you need, or you're going to go psychotic. <laughs> like, and, like, literally, the bag came. And that dude, like, created an experience that I'll always remember, him. Okay, that's why people keep working for your company, is because you create experiences like that that they remember. Does that make sense? It's not because you roll out cool self-service. Now, that might help, but it's because you're creating experiences. So I personally believe that HR technology is almost dead. Now, I know you're at an HR technology conference, and the eventful group people love me for saying something like that. But I think it's changing. It's changing to workforce technology that benefits the employees, that benefits the managers. And if the managers and employees are engaged, who does it benefit most? You. Because guess what you have? Data. You have process. You have data. You have all that. If it's you fat-fingering data, are you ever going to keep up? No. Never going to happen. Now, the other thing that's really important is how many different channels do you have to get to your employees? Think about that. Do you have a portal? Anyone have a portal? Intranet? I like to call it the link farm. It's a bunch of links. It's not the sexiest thing in the world. Do you like that link farm? That's it, yeah, yeah. But if you think about it, I think you have a brand. For, does anyone have a brand for recruiting, another brand for learning, another brand for benefits, another brand for comp, payroll? Anyone have that? We all have these different ways of pushing things out to people. And guess what the employees care about? None of it. They care about one view from the outside in as to what do I need to do to get something done? They don't want to know if it's the recruiting department or the performance department or the learning department or the comp department. Do we, when we go on to Spotify, do we say, rock, top 40, girl band? No. We just say what we want, right? We don't sit and break it all apart like that. That's how we work in companies. So when we think about creating the future experience, we have to break the silos. We have to break the silos, and that's really hard. How many of you work in a siloed organization? You have a lot of centers of excellence. Yeah. If we don't break our silos, guess what? Our employees are going to have a hard time from an experience standpoint. Okay? So really, really important to think about. We're trying to create this frictionless workforce experience. Now, HR people, for some reason, love talking about touching. 
And they say, oh, yeah, we're a high touch. It's always interesting to me. I'm like, touching an HR. I think there's two types of touching. I think there's <laughs> appropriate, not, in a, not appropriate and inappropriate. I think there's high, I think there's high touch human and high touch digital. And what we need to do is think about which of our processes are which. Now, how many of you would prefer to work in a high touch digital world where most of your stuff is just you can get find online versus talk to someone. Raise your hands high. Raise your hand if you'd prefer to talk to someone. Okay, interesting. So it's about in this room, it's about 85-15, I would guess. 85% would prefer to do high touch digital, 15% would rather talk to someone. Be now let me do a test. Because of that 15%, what do you do? Nothing? No. You move the 85% and you help the 15% until they're ready. What, do we, what have we done in the past? We make excuses and say, oh, there's 15% not ready. We can't do anything. Guess what? Your 20-year chasm is going to be a 30-year chasm very, very quickly. Okay? Because guess who's coming into the workplace? My kids, the digital natives who don't know what a phone book is. They don't know what a fax machine is. They don't like to talk to people. <laughs> no, I'm dead serious. They don't date. Like we were talking about this last night. Like my assistant's 24. She's coming on a trip to India with me next week. I'm like, oh. She's like, yeah, I have someone coming to India with me. I'm like, who's coming? She's like, someone I'm talking to. I was like, like someone you're dating? She goes, no, no, we're not dating. I'm like we're going from Los Angeles to India with someone that you're just talking to? She's like, yeah, well, we, we talk online and stuff. I'm like, seriously? Like, I'm so far out of it. But, jeez, <laughs> like, it just seems so weird to me. Like, I said, I, can't we say it's your boyfriend? It's like, no, no, it's just someone I'm talking to. So I guess they do like to talk, but not very intimately. Um, so think about this. What, what processes should be high-touch human? If I was sexually harassed, if I saw something going on in the organization, I'd want to talk to a boss. What? Not true. Now, maybe you do, but for those 15%, that number would all of a sudden go to 75% if all of a sudden I'm going to tell I bought that I was sexually harassed and see what happens. Eventually, maybe. But let's move into this world a little bit uh, on a pace. This is the other thing that's really important. A lot of people think if you buy the best technology in the world, you have a great experience. And guess what? That's not the case. User interface is completely different than experience. Two examples. Well, let me, let me use three examples. Uber. How many people like Uber? Do you like the user interface? It's pretty easy, right? How many of you went to change management training? No? Right? Wh what if the car never showed up? What's the experience? Bad. Good interface? Bad experience. Shopping. F pick your favorite shopping site. Good interface? If the product never comes? Bad experience. Tinder. <laughs> so dangerous to go here. You know, I find someone on Tinder. What, how do they look? They show up. <laughs> look different. <laughs> Good interface, bad experience. Does that make sense? So the technology is an interface. The experience is something different than that. So what creates an experience? Transaction plus interaction. Okay? Self-service transactions alone are not experiences. They're transactions. Experiences is the interaction piece. And that's where the most important component comes in, the unstructured data where you're building quote unquote trust. Now, what I want to move to is this difference between automation, taking things online, and digitization, which is really getting new value. Now, for all of you who've been taking pictures of the slides, you're about to get a copy of the slides. <laughs> I don't know if you're taking pictures of the slides, or many of you look like you're just taking selfies. But um, if you send a text message to that number, now, even if you don't want the slides, I'd still like you to do this, because it's an example of something that will change the way 
HR technology works going forward. So send a text to, sorry about the long number, 61-428-479-700. And the text, the body of the text, and it's not case sensitive, you can type it in lowercase, is techfestnz. Raise your hand if you've done that. Ma'am, what's your name? Tracy? Oh, who? who? Whichever one of you did it, you're the fastest texter in the room. Congratulations. <laughs> What did, there, did, it, did it respond to you? Yeah, it said, hi, I'm Simon, you bought Happy Mondays. Hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. What did it say? <laughs> hi. Slower. <laughs> I'm Simon, you bought Happy okay. Monday, New Zealand. A bot named Simon. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. If you would like a copy of Jason's slides, reply to me with just your email address. Interesting. Okay. So there's a bot talking to you. Was the bot unfriendly? No, the bot was friendly. He knew I was in New Zealand. Yeah, a little personalization. Simon, same guy that was up here a second ago. So put in your email address, and what you'll have in your email are the slides. Okay, now, did anyone get the bot to work? Raise your hand if the bot responded to you. Okay, did you go through, once again, can I ask you again, did you go through training? Change management. Well, it was pretty easy, right? Now, think about that. How would you get your employee, if you wanted to do that in like our world today, people would be directed to a page, right, where they would try to fill out a form and a process. I didn't direct you to any page, did I? You used the tool you were using for everyday life. Guess what employees and managers are going to do into the future? That. They're not going to go into self-service screens. Whether you use SMS text, Yammer, Skype, Facebook, Slack, WhatsApp, whatever your tool of choice is, that's how you're going to interact. Does that make sense? So the future look, is something called headless apps. Right? These apps, like these core HR systems, if you've got good data, the head is whatever your people use. Does that make sense? It's a really important point to get across, because hopefully I'll get invited back here someday, even though based on time management, maybe not. Um, in two years, I don't think people are going to be using self-service screens. I think they're going to be doing everything through SMS text or voice. And that's not crazy talk. Like, trust me, if I, if, like I said, if I'm coming back, I will sit here and show you all, and you probably will show me how people are doing it. So just keep that in mind. So these moments that matter, having a baby, getting a promotion, buying a new house, being in the hospital, those are the things that get people hooked on experience. And our goal is to move from adoption to addiction. Does that make sense? So don't measure adoption. Do people sign in? Are they addicted? How many of you are addicted to your device? How many of you slept with your device last night <laughs> in the same room? Oh, oh, yeah, that's a, yeah, I'm not addicted, but yeah, I slept with it in the same room. I didn't mean slept with it in bed with you. Yeah, so we are addicted, but that's not bad. That's how we work today. But guess what? Are people addicted to self-service? You guys know what the top three self, oh, here, here, one of the top three self-service transactions in the world, deployed, having a baby. When's the last time you had a baby? Seven years. How about you? 13, how about you? 8, how about you? 13, 3, 8, 7. If you used an app every 13, 7, or 8 years, would you be addicted to it? No. Would you say it was a great experience? When's the last time you had a baby? You don't have kids? Uh, okay, so think about this. Would you have a baby so you could use the self-service? Because it's such a great experience. That was a joke. <laughs> she was thinking about it. Like, no, don't. Trust me. With two, don't. Don't. It's not that good. But if there's value, that's what's going to get people using the tools. So our job is to rage with the machine, not against it, and realize that as HR and IT professionals, we need new skills and a new mindset. Some of those things are agility, a focus on strategy, the ability to market. 
to get people bought in, the what's in it for them, not me. How to tell stories, how to think digital first, how to be prescriptive, how to develop processes, and Tracy, right? What, back, Rachel, why did I get Tracy? Okay, Rachel, what did she read that Simon wrote in her bot? A conversation, right? Now that was a process, but in order to make it sound interesting to Rachel, what did I develop? A conversation. So a skill needed going forward is not just process design, but conversation design. Isn't that interesting? Like, we're not going to be just designing processes. We're going to be designing conversations. And those conversations are going to eventually be voice conversations that I'm going to have with Siri or Alexa or some voice tool. So this is cool sh stuff, isn't it? Like, these are cool things. This is why, um, so I just finished a new book last week um, that if I have a few copies with me, but over in the speaker's corner, I'll show you the book. Um, you can order it online. But um, I talk about process and conversation design, and one, I, that's why I think this is such a cool time to be in this space. Because we're dealing with stuff that's not HRIS. I don't even think people should be called HRIS anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's coding. It's developing. It's report writing. This is what we need in order to be successful with our people experience. So just to wrap up real quick, nothing will change unless we do. It's not going to come from the top. It has to start with us. And I think for the first time, at least in my career in this space, that the people are ready. Like, the people, the the employees and the managers are ready to receive and consume information on their mobile devices, on their desktops, on their laptops like they've never been before. And they're open to it, right? Now, there's still going to be people that talk about security concerns and things like that. But for the most part, they're open to it. Now, it, they're open to it if you what? Use the data. Think about the talent profile. How many of you ever have a, do you have a talent profile in your company? Yeah. Most organizations, they get, I mean, most people will fill out their, are you on LinkedIn? Yeah. yeah. Like, your LinkedIn profile probably is more complete than your talent profile in your company. Why is that? Because she gets more, what's your name? I shouldn't call you she. Sarah gets more value from having a good LinkedIn profile than she does from having a complete talent profile in her company. If the company used the talent profile, as a way to promote her and train her and grow her, would she fill it out? Totally. But that's why buying the technology alone can't work. So our people are ready. They're doing this. They're thirsty. How many of you have a Tinder profile? For reachers, for yeah. <laughs> Find Bill on Tinder. Thank you. Our processes can be ready, right? Our processes can be ready. They're ready to be changed but they're not going to change themselves. And the technology is ready. The technology is more than ready. The technology has surpassed us. So remember, it's 2018 outside of work. It's 1998 inside of work. So final question for you guys, are we ready? And really, what I would love for you guys to take from this whole, my presentation, but most importantly, the whole conference, is that you spend your two days answering this question. Are we ready? And what do we need to do? What do we need to do as a company, as a team of people who have come to this event to get ready? Thank you guys very much for your time.